to another edition of Totally Awesome Fishing How To's. This is where we're in the Totally Awesome Workshop. We're going to try and give you a few tips. It's windy, it's rainy, you can't get out fishing anyway. So what about changing the line on the reel? Now, looks pretty good, doesn't it? Nice, it's full up to the stub. But listen, this is how you've got to think about it. This fishing reel is full up. You've maybe had it for a year. You caught some fish on it. The reel carries, let's say, 450 yards of line. That's 1,300 feet of line. There's nowhere around England that I know that's 1,300 feet that you're going to reach from a charter boat, is it? So it's only that top little bit here. Let's say, let's say 300 feet there that's ever going to get to see the salt water. So why would you want to change it? It might get worn, it might get rough, whatever. But unless it's actually busted, why would you want to change it? Here's a little tip for you. Rather than going to the tackle shop and buying a complete spool of line, stripping all this off and filling it all up again, why not just, wait for this, turn the line around? It's good at the bottom. At the bottom it's never even seen the salt water yet. So, here's a tip how to save yourself some money and get twice as much wear out of your fishing reel line. This is how I do it. There's only one way to buy your fishing line and that is in bulk spools. As jumbo as you can get, you're going to have plenty of options to buy, say, half pound or pound filler spools, or even two pound spools, like these big ones, jumbo ones. And it doesn't matter really, you know, what make. You've got Shimano Tiagri, you've got Andy Line. This is an American one. I love this Andy. I don't particularly like the yellow. I like it in clear. Andy Premium, which is this one. That is real, really good, strong line. So buy your spools of line in bulk spools. You can always share it amongst your friends as well. The cost, the outlay of it all can all be split between a load of you. You can fill your reels up. But as I say, you don't have to change the whole line off the spool. You can do it just by reversing the line. And you can do this for any reels you've got. And you don't need to just do line reversal on your C reels. You can do it on all the freshwater reels as well. The same principle applies. You can line reverse it and save yourself some money. Right, the first thing you're gonna do is strip all the line off the reel. So how are you gonna do that? Well, you don't really wanna leave the whole rod together, do you? I mean, that makes it a bit tough. So with most of these rods that break just here, unscrew it pop it out and you're left with just the base of the rod butt. Now, I don't really want to hold that either because the way I'm going to do it is with an extra wheel and a drill that I'm going to use. I'm not just winding this round and round manually. I'm doing it the easy way to turn it round. Let me show you what I've got now. So what am I going to hold that rod and reed in? I'm going to hold it in one of these. Yes, a rod holder. Makes sense, doesn't it really? Put this into the vise, just lock it in and barely pinch it, and that will give you support to leave your other hands free, and all you do is feather the spool to stop it overrunning. I'll show you what I mean. Like that, just slide your, your rod butt in there, it's all locked up, and you're free to peel that line off, and I'll show you what I do next. Guys, I used to sit in front of the fireplace winding the line round and round a spool, reversing onto another one, winding it around a spool, and then winding it back on the reel to reverse it. No longer. Get yourself a bulk spool like this. Get yourself a piece of bolt or stud work. Yay long, just enough to go in a reel chuck. I cut an aluminium wide spacer, a nut, wide spacer, a nut. It's locked on that spool there. You can put two or three lots of line on there, and if you want to dump it, just Stanley knife and cut it all up. And then, I put that into the easy use drill. Right, every totally awesome workshop should have one of these. A cordless drill. In goes the bolt, in gear slowly, close the chuck, and there I've got a two speed setting and a high speed setting. Beware of the high speed setting when unspooling a reel. Slow speed. It's still pretty quick. High speed, however, is... Oh, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh, oh. Accident time. So I would stick 
to the small sport small speed right take the end of your fishing line make sure there's no underlying wraps you know when they that one coil get, it goes underneath the coil that's a real pain so you can just peel it off a little bit and then wind it back on level you can see how easy it is once you use this rod holder in a vise i just make an overhand knot because i'm going to want to put this on the bottom of the reel then a slip knot like so and that goes around my main bulk spool Oh, get it on there. Oh, I just snuck it up. Now, here is the critical bit. And I've got a light gardening glove on there. Now, it's rubber, so it's going to really grip on this nylon, but I'm just barely going to feather it, and I'm going to do it slowly. Don't put the ratchet on. That's going to burn out. And also, some people put it on light drag. I don't like to do that. You're going to, you know, warm up and probably burn out your drag plates. Just take the tension up. You're going to start slowly. Keep your thumb on the front leading edge of the spool like that just on the edge there and then we're going to start revolving now that's got to be better than doing it manually round and round and round with your hand but of course once you get more confident you get a little bit more of that now you've got to keep an eye out the front here just to the front make sure it's laying on there perfectly straight you've got to be on there straight you can actually spread it back to it's easier in fact if you spread it back to the forwards see closer like this now I'm using my thumb, uh, my finger here, the centre finger there, just to over on the spool. Don't get it pinched and jammed in the bars. But I can spread the line if I want to. Don't forget, not too worried because I'm going to reverse it. Now, I just want to show you something when I get a little bit more colour on this spool. This is just a little tip to show you the difference. Right, I'm going to stop it just there. Now you might be able to see this is very light coloured. That's where it's been abraded up, up and down the rod, through the rings, over the guys, whatever you use. It's had wear and tear and it's taken possibly some of the colour and pigmentation out of there. Now just to show you what a new one looks like, there is the new colour. That's exactly the same line as 50 pound Diago Shimano uh, tournament. Um, that's what I've been using for Paul Wiggle Sharks. And I don't, I've used some here, obviously I've used some, I don't want to use it again because there's plenty on the bottom of this reel if I turn it round. So let's crack on and get this ball emptied. I just want to show you what happens if you do it at fast speed. This could go very badly wrong for me. This is the way to do it, but you run a risk of a catastrophe. Okay, when you get near the end of the end of the spool like this, I take the glove off and I just do it very, very slowly then. Just down to the stop. I can gradually see the bar stop coming down. There we come. A little bit longer, a little bit longer. Now watch it because a reduced diameter means it's flying around there. Slowly, 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 slowly. Otherwise the, the reel the jam or you'll yank it out, bang. Or the drill comes and smacks all into here, which is not good. Cut it off and we're done. Right. One reel completely despooled. The good stuff is here is on the bottom. Now how are we going to get this back on the other side? Easy. Another spool. Another one is a clean one. I'm going to tie this one to that one, and away we go. We reverse them. Let me show you how it's done. Right, guys, you've obviously got the thread there or the bolt that you're going to put in the reel chuck, but this time I put it into this piece of hollow tube at a slight incline in another vise, so it's tipped back, it's not going to go flying off, and I've obviously tied it onto this spool. So, what I've got here, this piece of line here, is actually going to be the top of the line, the stuff that's never even seen the light of day before. Same principle, just feather the top of the spool and change from one spool to the other. Just be a little bit careful with this one so it doesn't fly off and take your teeth out.
Right now, before I fill this reel spool back up, I want to show you where the corrosion. This is one of my backup spare reels. And just look at the corrosion on the inside of that spool, which I would never have seen if I hadn't despooled that reel. So I'm going to give that a coat of WD-40, but I'm going to wipe it off because I have heard that it degrades the line. So check your reel spools and then we're going to refill it. Right, we're going to put the line back on the reel, fill it up, but I'm not going to use just one end of the line. I'm going to tie, like this, a what's called a surgeon's loop, a double overhand loop. Once it goes through, twice it goes through, and just before I pull that knot down, moisten it with a bit of spit and it won't burn itself, pull it down, snip off the tag end. So and then I use that around the stub of the reel spool. Right, I just tie this double line, keep it nice and tight in a double tucked slip knot. Now the reason for that is if, if you ever get to the bottom of this with a fish taking the line out, you're in deep trouble anyway. But I just like to retain it as a nice strong point there. Oh, that's really tight. Snip off the tag end, and we can start winding away. That's that done. Now you're going to ask yourself, how is he going to turn this reel handle and keep the spool going around this way? All I'm going to do is this. Now when I'm big game fishing, you should always do this when you're winding 50, 80 or 130 pound test line onto an 80 or 130 reel or even a 50 reel. Put it in a bucket of water and you've got to wind it on wet. Now you can see the advantage of having that rod holder there because I can crank away and no problems at all. It's nice and easy to do. It's not flying around anywhere. I can go as fast or as slow as I want and the real spool in there is flying around nice and wet and I'm bedding it on nice and tight as well with my fingers. It's fresh water obviously not salt water. Two more tips here. When you get the line running through your fingers, do it under tension, even though it's going wet, and spread it backwards and forwards evenly. Don't crisscross it like that, because if you had a fast running fish, it burns as it rips across the spool like that. The other thing is, crank under pressure. Put a lot of pressure on it and just do touching turns. If you don't, again, if you get a big shark or a big skate, this will pull down and that just there will, I can't do it to show you because I've packed it on, will we'll, we'll bed in there and then it'll burn when it comes out and it might break. So that's another couple of tips for you. Spread it evenly, under pressure and away we go. There we go, all done. Keep hold of the tag end of the line. All you're going to do then, pop on the top section of your rod screw it up, thread up your line, out of the rod holder, you're ready to rock and roll. Now doesn't that look sweet on there? It looks like new line. And you know what? It's not new line. Well it is. It's at the bottom of the spool. It's going to have very slight memory where it's been wound onto a smaller diameter stub at the bottom. Once you get one or two fish it'll all straighten out. And you know what that saved me? It saved me buying more fish in line. I love it. So there you go, you don't actually have to change brand new line. You've probably got new line on your spool. As long as there's plenty on the reel to turn around, just reverse it. And you don't just do it with multiplier reels. You can do it with all your fixed spool reels as well, because the same principle applies. They take 300 yards of line, don't they? Do you have a cast 300 yards? Is there a fish swimming in British waters in a lake or river that's going to take 300 yards off you? No. So, providing you've got quite a bit of line left on there, just reverse it. And if there is a gap, you can still pack it out at the end. That's what I call totally awesome fishing tips to save money. Until next time.